plus than 38, I will find the product of a whole number and a mixed number using the distributive property. So you're going to notice that less than 38 has the exact same objective as less than 37. And that's why today we're not going to write in our journals. We're going to go ahead and go right straight to the problem set because we're pretty much doing the exact same thing that we did in less than 37. But today we are going to change those mixed numbers, or excuse me, those improper fractions into mixed numbers. Okay, so let's take a look at our problem set here. Go ahead and write your name on your problem set. And let's get started. So it says fill in the unknown factor. So remember that we are using the distributive property to solve these problems. So that's what we're doing here. We've got seven times three and four fifths, which is the same thing as seven times three plus seven times four fifths. So you notice we eliminated a step. In the last lesson, we started with this step. Seven times three plus four fifths. So we are eliminating that step, okay? So now we're just going right to seven times three plus seven times four fifths. So now we're going to go ahead and finish this. So seven times three is 21 plus seven times four fifths would be 28 fifths. So now yesterday we were just leaving that 28 fifths. Today we're not going to do that. So I've got 21 plus, and I'm going to take this 28 fifths and I'm going to change it into a mixed number. So remember, I can change this into, and I'm going to kind of do a number bond here, but I'm going to kind of do it out to the side so I still have room to write. 28 fifths would be the same thing as 25 fifths, because if I count it by fives, I could get to 25, and then I'm also going to do 3 fifths. So 25 fifths is the same thing as the whole number 5, and then I'm going to add 3 fifths. So now I'm just going to add 21 plus 5 and 3 fifths, which gives me 26 and three-fifths. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. So we've got three times twelve and three times seven-eighths. So that's going to give me three times twelve is thirty-six plus three times seven-eighths, which is twenty-one-eighths. So again, I've got this improper fraction and I need to change it into a mixed number. So I'm going to go ahead and do this sideways number bond again. If I counted by eighths, I would have to stop at sixteen eighths because I would say 8 eighths, 16 eighths, 24 eighths and that's too much. So now I've got to think of what would be left over because whatever I have here when I add it together it has to equal 21 eighths so that would be 5 eighths. So now I've still got 36 and then I'm going to change this to a mixed number so 16 eighths is the same thing as 2 and then I'm going to add my 5 eighths so now I just have to add those together. 36 plus 2 is 38 and I still have my 5 eighths. Alright, so now for 2, we're going to do the exact same thing. They're just not going to start it for us. We have to do it all by ourselves. So I've got 7 times 8 and 2 fifths, which is the same thing as 7 times 8 plus 7 times 2 fifths. So why don't you go ahead and solve this all by yourself since this is the second lesson that we've used this strategy. And when you're ready, come back and we'll check it together. All right, so 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 2 fifths is 14 fifths. I feel really confident that you won't have any issues getting to this point. I'm real, the only part that I'm really concerned about today is going from this improper fraction to a mixed number. Even though we've done it several times, I think that this is the trickiest part of this whole lesson. So if I count by fives, I would get to 10 fifths and then I would have four fifths left over. So that's going to give me 56 plus, and then I'm going to change this to my mixed number, so 10 fifths is the same thing as two, and then I'm going to add my four fifths. So I've got 56 plus two and four fifths, which equals 58 and four fifths. Okay, let's try a few more. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to think to yourself, do you feel confident enough to try this by yourself? If you do, Pause the video and do as much of these next three problems as you can. Anytime you get stuck, you can always press play, and I'll walk you through it, and you can pause again and start over. All right, so I've got 4 and 5, 6 times 9. So again, they're trying to trick us by writing this backwards. So let's just let's think of this as 9 times 4 and 5, 6. So we've got 9 times 4 plus 9 times 5, 6. 
So that gives me 36 plus 45 sixes. Okay, so for 45 sixes, if I counted by sixes, I would eventually get to 42 sixes. And I know that because 6 times 7 is 42, so it's kind of like I'm dividing. So then I would have 3 sixes left over. So now I've got 36 plus, and 42 sixes is the same thing as 7 and three sixes, and then I add this together, and that gives me 43 and three sixes. All right, moving right along, let's take a look at C. So now I've got three times eight, plus three times 11 twelfths, and that gives me 24 plus 33 twelfths. So now when I think about counting by 12s, I know I say 12, 24, 36. So 36 is too much, so I'm going to say 24 twelfths. And then I have to think 24 plus what equals 33? Well, that would be 9. So I've got 9 twelfths. Together, these equal 33 twelfths. So now I've got 24 plus 2 and 9 twelfths, which equals 26 and nine twelfths. All right, last one on this on this slide here. So we've got, I'm gonna have to come down a little bit. I've got five times 20 plus five times eight tenths. So five times 20 would be 100 because five times two is 10 and then add my zero plus 40 tenths. So this one's gonna be really easy to make into a mixed number. I like easy. All right, so this would be 4, right? Because I can say 10 times 4 is 40, so that would be 100 plus 4 equals 104. All right, one last one. Then we're going to get to do a few application problems. Okay, so I've got, again, they're trying to trick you. They put it backwards, but they're not going to trick us. So we're going to do 4 times 25 plus 4 times 4 one hundredths. So that's going to be equal to... 100 plus, and this is going to be 16 hundredths. So because that's not an improper fraction, we can leave it as it is, 100 and 16 hundredths. All right, so let's take a look at this application problem. So we're going to take what we've learned and we're going to apply it to real life. So if the distance around a park is 2 and 5 tenths miles, and that is real life because a lot of times when they make a park and you run around it or you walk around it, it's not exactly 2 miles or it's not exactly 3, three miles. So this is pretty much something that you could typically see. So when you go around the park, it's 2 and 5 tenths miles. And Cecilia ran around it three times. How far did she run? So we just read it. Now let's think, is there something that we could draw? Well, we could draw a tape diagram, right? So we've got 2 and 5 tenths. How many times? We've got 3 times. So I'm going to divide my tape diagram into 3 parts. I've got 2 and 5 tenths, 2 and 5 tenths, 2 and 5 tenths. So what am I trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out the total. So I could add all 3 of these together, or I could use multiplication, right? I can say 3 times 2 and 5 tenths, and that's going to equal 3 times 2 plus 3 times 5 tenths. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 5 tenths would be 15 tenths. So here I have an improper fraction. So this would be 10 tenths, and that would leave over 5 tenths, so that's going to give me 6 plus my 10 tenths is 1, then I have 5 tenths, together that equals 7 and 5 tenths. So how far did she run? So we're going to say Cecilia ran 7 and 5 tenths miles. It's pretty far. All right. So Windsor the dog ate four and three-fourths snack bones each day for a week. How many bones did Windsor eat that week? So let's think, is there something that we can draw? 
Well, a tape diagram seems to work pretty well. I'm going to kind of make this tape diagram kind of big because I he ate one every day for a week. So how many did he eat? Well, how many days are in a week? Seven, right? So let's divide our tape diagram into seven parts. So that means I'm going to draw six lines. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six lines. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got four and three fourths, four and three fourths, and let's go ahead and write that every single box. Okay, so what is the part I'm trying to figure out? I want to know how many bones did he eat, so I'm trying to figure out a total. So what would be my number sentence? I could add all of these together. I could do repeated addition seven times, or I could say seven times four and three-fourths, which probably would be a little bit faster. So that would be seven times four plus seven times three-fourths. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and solve the rest of this problem by yourself. And then let's come back and check together. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and finished this problem by yourself. You should have got 7 times 4 is 28, and 7 times 3 fourths is 21 fourths. I have no doubt that you can get to this point. Whenever you get to this improper fraction, if we counted by fours, I would get to 20 fours before I went over, and then that would leave 1 fourth. So now I've got 28 plus, and 20 fourths would be the same thing as 5, because 5 times 4 is 20. So 20 divided by 4 would be 5, and then I have 1 fourth. So now I have to add 28 and 5, which would be 33, and 1 fourth. So my question is, how many bones did Windsor eat that week? So my answer would be, Windsor ate 33 and 1 fourth bones that week. Okay? All right, so we were doing we were just pretty much continuing the strategy that we used in lesson 37. The big difference today was going from these improper fractions to mixed numbers and adding them together. So hopefully, you're feeling more confident with multiplying a whole number times a mixed number using the distributive property.